What's up guys? It's Amelia. Welcome back to my channel and hello if you are new. Today I am going to tell you about my personal experience with a dermatologist. I know a lot of you guys throughout the past few years have actually asked me if I've been to a dermatologist or recommended that I go see a dermatologist. So I kind of just wanted to tell you my personal experience and please know that if you are considering seeing a dermatologist, I highly recommend it. Always see a professional if you need help. Now before I get started, I do want to let anyone who's new to my channel know that I have extremely oily, acne prone, and extremely sensitive skin. Pretty much ever since I hit puberty, my skin has been like this. So I want to say I've had acne for a good 17 years now. And that, that's a really long time. I want to say I started getting really bad acne around the fifth or sixth grade. And it was to the point where I would say looking back on it, I didn't know how bad my skin was then. I, I was kind of oblivious to my skin back then, but my parents eventually were like, yeah, your skin's getting kind of bad you got to go to the doctor, which honestly kind of hurt me a little bit because I was like, wow, like I didn't think people really cared what I looked like. I think this was also an age where it was kind of getting to the point where you're self becoming self-aware. So yeah, I ended up going to my very first dermatologist, I want to say in like sixth, seventh grade, and I had pretty severe acne. It was, it was all over big cystic acne. Now I'm going to call her dermatologist A because she was my very first one. So she gave me basically the sheet, like, okay, you know, this is what you need to know on how to wash your skin. And here's a few, you know, cleansing samples. Oh, and here's a prescription for two topical treatments. Now, I do not remember the names of these topical treatments. At that point, I felt like I was kind of like forced to go to the dermatologist because I was one of those people who, if I didn't want to deal with something, I avoided it. Not a good thing, but that was just who I was as a kid. So I did start the topical treatments because again, I was getting to the point where I knew I needed to do something about my skin. Those I think helped a little bit, but not a lot. So I believe after a few different topical treatments, we did switch to a oral prescription. And let me tell you, I was really bad at taking pills. So I actually requested like little capsules that can be split open and like poured into some ice cream. And then I would take it that way, which I don't recommend. I recommend learning how to swallow a pill very early often. <laughs> that ice cream was disgusting. I believe I was on a couple different options with her. And apparently my skin was getting better because I know my mom had told me that other parents were reaching out to her being like, hey, like your daughter's skin is doing pretty good. Like, what are you doing? The thing I think that really bothered me was when I learned that it was not okay to wash your face with hand soap and it was not okay to moisturize your face with a fragrant body butter. Before you come at me, this was back before skincare was a huge thing, especially on YouTube. You know, there was no skincare by Hiram telling you, oh, stay away from that product or oh, this product actually has good ingredients. So I was on my own. Now I remember telling my dermatologist that I did this and I remember she was concerned. I apologize if you can hear that. Like I hear water running and I think my neighbors upstairs are taking a shower or something. So if that catches on the audio, I apologize. But yeah, my dermatologist did know that I was washing my face with hand soap and she never really tried to correct it. She was just like, oh, are you still using hand soap? And I'm like, yes. And she's like, okay. So it wasn't until I kind of started doing research on my own for acne that you should never wash your face with antibacterial hand soap, just hand soap in general, don't do it. I started using the products she was recommending like Cetaphil as a face wash and that seemed to work for a little bit for me. Now I was visiting this dermatologist at least four times a year, I think every three months because she would slightly adjust something or if I told her like, oh, I think it's working, I wanna continue it. And honestly, a lot of times I did tell her it was working even though I don't think it was. I think that was a very first mistake I made on my part. Um, there was at one point the topical treatments that I had, like the, I believe I had a salicylic one in the morning. It was burning my skin because I don't think I was using it correctly and my skin was just flaking off. And then I also had a benzyl peroxide treatment in the evening, which I thought that worked great. I love that product, but the salicylic acid one, I don't think my skin enjoyed 100%. It was kind of getting to the point where I'd literally just show up and she's like, oh, is everything still working out? Your skin looks okay. Do you want to continue doing this? And I oftentimes just said yes. And she didn't really advise me to try something else. And she knew my skin was really oily. I had, that was a huge thing that I wanted to completely get rid of at that point in my life. And I was like, I, 
I can't stand my oily skin and she actually recommended I try the Cetaphil foam cleanser which I believe was targeted towards oily skin it was a newer product at the time she's like oh try this and I was so freaking excited I was like oh my gosh anything my dermatologist gives me it's like you know I know this is good to use little did I know that that is not true 100% not true if something is not working for you that your dermatologist recommends tell your dermatologist that maybe they can you know help guide you in a different direction that cleanser just made my skin so itchy so dry I couldn't stand my skin. Finally decided that, you know what? I don't think this dermatologist is working out. I want to try a different dermatologist and see, get kind of like a second opinion because I just didn't think her method of approaching my treatment was working anymore. So my mom was amazing and she found a one of the top dermatologists in the region. So it took a while to, I believe, get an appointment actually because she was always so booked. So I saw her, we'll call her dermatologist B. And she was like, okay, like, you know, I see what dermatologist A did for you. She'll change your morning prescription to a Retin-A, which at the time, I don't think I'd ever been on a Retin-A before. I was kind of approaching that age where it was like, okay for me to be on a Retin-A, um, which is a, if you don't know, it's a very strong vitamin A derivative, which a lot of times retinol has, but it's like a, Retin-A is like a prescription strength retinol. And retinol is kind of like this amazing miracle product in the beauty community. I cannot wait to get started in retinol again. That's a whole different story. Anyway, morning treatment was a retinol and then she was going to keep me on the same night treatment that my dermatologist A had put me on and I really liked that one so I had no issues and she actually decided to change my oral prescription as well to a slightly stronger one which I was very happy about. <laughs> so at that point I started really getting into skincare more and making sure to keep my skincare really simple along with my topical treatments and took my oral treatment as often as possible. And my skin was showing progress, not enough progress to the point where I was happy with it, but enough progress. So I went back to the dermatologist and I believe I needed a renewal on my prescription. So we had just like, you know, asked the dermatologist for a renewal, but they're like, no, you gotta come in, you gotta visit us, we gotta do a checkup before I give you another prescription. And I think I only had like a week left of you know, prescription left and she didn't have an appointment available for another like three, four months. So I was like, well, what do we do? So I guess she had like nurses or like assistants or like people who were just under her who helped her practice out. And she's like, you can just, you know, see one of them. And now I forgot to mention this as well. I believe Dr. B had already kind of went over this she did give me the option of accutane like right off the bat like first visit she's like okay you've had acne for a very long time now you've clearly been on many different topical treatments a couple different oral treatments so i really recommend accutane but i did not want to do that because i had heard of the strong side effects of accutane so it was something i wasn't too keen on and the way she also approached it, I actually you know what thinking about it now I believe Dr. A had actually given me the option and I think that was another reason why I decided to get another dermatologist opinion because I had heard well it's technically not called Accutane that's just a brand it's called isotretinoin so I'm going to use that term from now on but yeah I believe Dr. A had recommended going on isotretinoin which scared me a lot because she had told me it's a pretty serious drug she gave me a whole packet about you know the blood tests and the prescriptions and i was like that's scary to me um i didn't want to do it. i was still in high school i believe at the time well actually i believe i had just graduated high school and i was in college now so when i saw we'll call her dr c which was like the nurse to dr b i'm sorry if this is so confusing she's like yeah well you know i think your topical treatments are great but she's like you know if you're still not happy with your skin which i wasn't i was still not 100%. I will say this, over the years when I was with Dr. A, my skin would get clearer, but I wouldn't have clear days of skin. With Dr. B, I got to the point where I had one or two clear days of skin in a row, and then I'd kind of break out again, but then like more clear skin days were after that. So I'd always look forward to those clear skin days. So when I did visit the, the most recent doctor, Dr. C, she's like, okay, well, we can give you a stronger prescription because I still, again, I wanted more clear skin days. So she's like, okay, like, you know, we can put you on a slightly stronger prescription, or again, we really recommend isotretinoin. And again, I didn't want to go on isotretinoin, so I was like, just give me the stronger prescription. Now, at the time, they did not tell me how strong this prescription actually was, because if you did not take your prescription properly, like with food and like, just, just take it properly, it could really mess up your stomach, which I didn't realize. It wasn't until I didn't eat enough food with the medication where I 
realize that you would be in the bathroom 30 minutes later if you did not <laughs> take this prescription correctly. So I was on this prescription and again, it was working miracles. Like I was actually starting to have clear skin weeks and not weeks in a row, but like, oh, one week my skin was really nice and clear and the next week, uh, not looking so good. Kind of around this time where I was doing more research on acne and started wondering if I had hormonal acne because none of the other previous treatment works and none of the dermatologists really acknowledged the fact that I could have hormonal acne, but at my very next appointment, I believe it was with either Dr. B or Dr. C, I can't remember, but I remember they're like, you know, you've been on this really strong prescription for a long time. Would actually prefer you were on isotretinoin compared to being on this prescription for so long. I was like, oh, well, thanks for, you know, telling me that earlier, which I don't know why they didn't. So I kind of started bringing up the subject. Now, this was mentioned a few times with Dr. B and Dr. C at the previous appointments, um, but I did tell them that I would eventually want to try birth control because I was I was kind of nervous to go to a gynecologist. I didn't want to deal with that <laughs> um, at the time, but I was like, I, I just want to try birth control. I feel like it's going to work for me. I feel like it's going to work really well. And so they're like, okay, so get an appointment with the OBGYN, you know, see what birth controls they can give you. And, you know, we'll keep giving you this current prescription. Anti it was like an anti-inflammatory um, acne prescription. So I visited the OBGYN, I got my prescription. I believe it was like three to six months later, my cheeks had completely cleared. Like my nose and cheeks, I wasn't getting acne there anymore. And I was so freaking excited. My chin, now I wanna preface this as well. My forehead, I had really bad acne throughout high school, but I think after high school, the acne on my forehead kinda of like went away. And then it wasn't until I went on birth control where my cheeks and my nose finally cleared up. I don't um, remember 100%, but I don't believe my chin was ever like as bad as it is now back then. You know, I went to my dermatologist and she's like, well, your skin's looking really good. Let's try taking you off the prescription treatment. Let's just try have you on the birth control. So that's what we did and it got to the point where the birth control I thought was doing so much better. I was like, I don't need a dermatologist anymore. I didn't feel like the topical treatments were working and I definitely wanted to try other things than just those topical treatments that I had been on like for the past few years. So I completely stopped going to the dermatologist altogether. And for the past few years, I have been kind of switching different birth controls for my acne to see how it changes things. And I do wanna say, I think a couple months after I stopped taking the oral acne prescription uh, is when I started getting acne around my chin. So yeah, I think I've been on at least three or four different birth controls now. I definitely want to look into different ones. Um, I've definitely adjusted my diet as well a little bit. The past few years, I used to not eat any dairy. Lately, I've been kind of incorporating it back into my life. So I don't know if that's the main reason why my skin has been flaring up. So I'm still learning. And I think that's something that I want to definitely reiterate to all of you guys who watch my videos and watch my reviews. I'm still learning. I'm still on the journey. I'm not someone who has cleared their skin and giving you advice. I want to learn like along with you guys and I want to tell you what products work for me if you are someone who's struggling with acne for years and years and years. So to kind of wrap everything up, would I recommend going to a dermatologist? Absolutely. Again, always seek a professional if you are having a trouble in a specific area. Things I feel like you should definitely do when you're visiting a dermatologist is be completely 100% upfront with your dermatologist. Let them know when something's not working. Let them know if you think something is working. Um, I felt like that was a lot of mistakes that I made on my part. I was just too scared to be like, hey, I don't think this is working. A lot of the times I kind of just was like, okay, you know best, like you, you tell me what I need. And no one knows your own skin better than you do. So definitely be sure to like stick up for yourself when you're visiting a dermatologist. And don't be afraid to get a second opinion. Like if you see a dermatologist and they recommend products, visit another dermatologist, see what they recommend. So yeah, that was my whole experience with a dermatologist. I really hope this video was kind of helpful or insightful at least. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up. It really, really does help support my channel. And question of the video, have you ever been to a dermatologist and what was your experience with them? I'm very curious if your experience was different than my personal experience. Like, did they help you a lot? Did they not so much help you? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you are new to my channel and really, really like me and really 
to see more beauty and skincare videos, then be sure to click the little red subscribe button that is right down below and be sure to click the little notification bell that is right next to the subscribe button. This way you will get notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you would like to see one of my skincare reviews, be sure to click the video that is right here. And if you would like to see my most recent upload, then be sure to click the video that is right up here. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. Be sure to stay safe and healthy and I will see you next time. Bye.